how do you resolve paying your guy versus rolling the dice on a new guy? Well, I think it's uh, you got a proven product, a guy who's been in your building, who's got a, a relationship with your quarterback. And ultimately, you have to have a cutoff, well, you know, just like you do when you go in to buy a house. You're going, all right, we'd like to buy the house for this, uh, but we're walking away at this number. And you kind of set those parameters before you do a deal. And ultimately, you know, I think Steph and his agent did a, did a, did a fair job of pointing out their points of even where the number two market has gone. Uh, to why the number one market should be. And, you know, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams had gotten done before ours. So, but, you know, I just tried to envision, all right, if we, okay, we can either sign him to an extension, you know, maybe he plays it out, but maybe there's, we have some issues with that down the line. Um, or we can go the route that some teams are choosing trade and redraft. But I just couldn't imagine where we're getting, what we were going to get to, um, to replace Steph in the sense of what he brings our offense. You know, he opens it up for Gabe Davis, for, for Dawson Knox, and uh, some of the other guys that we have here. We're a different offense without Steph. What have you done to put the playoff loss behind you? And, and how confident are you that when it's time to get going with the 2022 season, it's not going to be something – that that causes any lingering issues for the locker room, for the coaching staff, for the front office, for anyone. Yeah, I think you have to have honest, open conversations. And and just like we dissect the draft, like we were talking about, you know, go back and dissect uh, the finish of that game in regulation and and then overtime. And you have to be honest. And and if you made a mistake in that process, whether it was a play call, whether it was a player. Um, whatever your role in it was, you got to own up to it. And I think that's been the, the process. It's hard because it's an abrupt end and, and you go through that, but um, open, honest dialogue and how, what, what are we taking from this? You got to learn from it or you're going to repeat it. And um, I think our culture is strong here, Mike, those things can cause issues. There's, there's no doubt you'd be, you've pointed out some places that may not have recovered, but uh, we feel, you know, with Josh Allen, Josh is just one of those guys He's, you know, obviously he played very well in that game, but, um, you know, he's got the mindset that, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to let that bother us. Uh, you bring in a guy like Von Miller who just won the Super Bowl, who's won two Super Bowls, beat us in when I was in Carolina and in the Denver one. But, um, you know, you try and add some pieces of guys that can instill confidence, different viewpoints. Um, and last year was last year. You know, only one team is going to be happy at the end of the year, in my mind. You either win it or you don't. We had our opportunities. We had our opportunities the year before in Kansas, and we didn't do it, and we came back. So new year, new team, new season, and, and we're excited about where we're at. Bills Mafia stand up. The Buffalo Bills, listen, this is a team that if the overtime rules was different, they probably would have been in the Super Bowl. But they did what they needed to do. You go and you get Kair Elam out of Florida yes. to go on the other side of Tredavious White to lock down those, that receiver, Garrett Wilson, you just talked about, to put them over there on already a big Big time defense to add this young fella in there. I thought that was an excellent pickup in the first round. And then to come back, all we talked about is they have no running game, no running game. Help Josh Allen out. Well, they go get Dalvin Cook's little brother, James Cook, to put in the backfield. Who can do it all? Can run in between the tackles, can catch out of the backfield. We've seen what he did at Georgia. Big time playmaker, home run hitter in this offense to already go with a bunch of big time players on the offensive side of the ball. And then you go get a skilled linebacker. You go get a skilled linebacker out of Baylor and Terrell, Terrell, uh, Bernard. Bernard, to go get him and put him in that defense, and probably going to be a really good special teams player as well. And then talking about special teams. If we don't get a first down and oh we got to punt the ball, <laughs> you go get Matt and you change the field position big time. This is going to help your defense. This is going to help your offense. I thought the Buffalo Bills won this draft. I thought they hit on everything they needed, and they are ready to go make a run. That's Check it out. Goal. Someone get me a table. It's a break in half uh, right he there. Knows. He already knows. Oh, look at this. Well, he, they say he outkicks his coverage. Well, he kicks it over their heads, and if they do get it, then <laughs> they have, they're look going the wrong inside. way. 86, 86 yards, yards. And drops inside the three. He's a left-footed punter. You don't see a whole lot of that. That's, that's tough in and of itself to handle. The spin comes differently. And then you see the placement, but it's all like 60, 70, 80 yards. And, and as you talked about before, the dude's an athlete. He'll come down and stick you, Reese. 
The dude is an athlete. Matt, I, I think of all the people, all, the, all of us that have worn a helmet and shoulder pads at some time and have dreamed of having pundits talking about us after we've been drafted. And you got to experience it. Take us through that phone call a little bit. And do, do, are you allowing yourself a moment of, hey, the work is paying off? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I think it's more or less that the work has just started. This is going to be a long phase of my life, so I feel like it's more of a a beginning, uh, I guess. But it was it was cool. I definitely was. I didn't get to hear the, um, what they said about me until after because I was on the phone at that point, um, and everyone in our house was kind of going crazy. But it was it was awesome. It was a surprise. I didn't. I just got a phone call from a New York area code, and I, I knew the Bills were coming up next, so that was my guess. And uh, spoke with uh, some some people from there, and and uh, they they hung up and, and let me and my family watch them at TV. So it was definitely a special moment. Who hugged you first? My mom for sure. She would have, <laughs> she would have tackled someone if they tried to hug me first. Um, I love Justin Herbert. I really really do. I put him ahead of Justin Herbert right now. Okay. Why would not? All right? So that's one out the box. Joe Burrow balled out. But that didn't take away from what Josh Allen did. I mean, when you look at Joe Burrow, Cincinnati's defense played better in the AFC Championship game. But when you look at what Buffalo did, first of all, I think he, I think the Buffalo Bills, I think Leslie French, I don't know if they'll ever get another head coaching job again. When you can't stop a team from getting a field goal range in 13 seconds. I mean, damn, 13 seconds. I don't think, I think that will be held against. If Eric Bieniemy can't get a head coaching job, Leslie Frazier's days as a head coach have been over. He ain't the head coach of Buffalo, but he was a coordinator that was about to get the head coaching job until he gave up that damn field goal. Let him get in field goal range in 13 seconds. Seconds when the Dallas Cowboys couldn't get, even get a snap off in 14 seconds. I think that's just atrocious. Now the bottom line is this: so how he figured we, out how we, to swing Dallas. In. I can't stand you. Whatever. I the can't point stand is, it's you. necessary Always. for both of y'all. Both of y'all, all right? You heard me. But the bottom line is this: when you think about Allen, okay, okay, you look at Tom Brady. We're not gonna sit up there and put him against Tom Brady out of respect, because Tom Brady's the goat. That we know what kind of season he had. Aaron Rodgers is that dude. You know he's a bad brother. We get that. Patrick Mahomes is that. Outside of that. How am I just going to put Deshaun Watson in there? You ain't even play a whole year last year. How can I, I just did. do that? That's because the last what time you do, I laid, because the last time I laid eyes on him, he was ridiculous. What was the time? The last time you laid eyes on him, but the last time you laid John, eyes on yeah. football, he wasn't anywhere around. Charles Haley, you just so the saw fact him. of the matter is, I got to look at that. Yeah, not, so hold on, that hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Did. I'm not questioning. I'm not questioning the greatness. The greatness. Of Deshaun Watson, that brother's a stud. I'm a, you listen, he got his money. We know what Cleveland's doing. We know why, because that brother's so he's something special. But to sit up there and to look at Josh Allen and the last two seasons that he has had, and how he's knocking on the door and how great he has been, to put a guy ahead of him that we ain't seen in 18 months. I mean, come on, Kate. Bro. I think that's a bit that's a bit okay. extreme. So that's a so, bit extreme. So, so for me. When I look at Josh Allen and we're talking about moving forward, I'm not even basing mine on last year. I'm talking about moving forward. You know who's calling the plays for the Buffalo Bills now? Ken Dorsey. Brian Dable acted as yeah. the New York Molly Giants. That is going to be a big <coughs> factor on that young quarterback. Ken Dorsey ain't Brian Key. Dable. Yes, it is. But did you not watch this man? Did you not watch this man all year last year, bro? Absolutely, like I right did. Right now, we having a right next we to having you. a conversation about the top five quarterbacks right now. How don't you have Josh Allen in there based on on the field? Well, six. I got him at six. Six. I got him at six. Come but, on. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. Did Come you have on. Justin Herbert in your top five? He's at five. All right. He's let me five. ask you this question. As much as I love Justin Herbert, because I do. I, and that's to, to me, that's why Brian Flores ain't He's in Miami. He's phenomenal. If they, pick, if they pick Justin Herbert in Miami instead of Tua Tungvaloa, Brian Flores would still be there, and the, and the Miami Dolphins might be winning the AFC East instead of Buffalo. But having said all of that, I ask you a simple question, Keyshawn Johnson. Has Justin Herbert been in the playoff yet? No. All right, so, so has Josh Allen been? Twice? Yes. You yes. see what he's done in the playoffs, right? Yes. How you going to put a second-year player ahead of him because and he ain't I even watched, been in the postseason? Because, Stephen A., I watched him not only in college, uh, also I watched probably eight games in college, and I probably watched the person here in L.A., probably about six of them, and I like what I see. So we I going just like by what I see. We going by what we saw in college I, three no, years no, ago? No, 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 no. I'm on. telling you, 
I'm telling you, I have a favorite because I had an opportunity to see his college work and his NFL work up close right. in person. So what so about I'm in love what about with Josh Allen you don't LA. like? And playing what in about LA. Josh Allen you don't like? It's not that I don't like him. I just prefer Justin right. Herbert sitting at five. That's all. I mean, you, the, the, the fact that he played in L.A. that ain't got nothing to do with this? Because you know how you No, I'm not a Charger yeah, got fan. Everything to you know, do with no, I'm not a Charger anything, fan. You are not a Charger but fan, but you are college. a fan of all things L.A. Anything that's L.A. sprinkles <laughs> on, I mean, he gets a <laughs> biased <laughs> treatment with you. No, that's hey, not hold true. Up. Hold up. You too. You too. So don't, you don't, don't think go, swag. That's you exactly too. what I was thinking, Marcus. Swag So you don't – so moving things forward. You don't think right. losing Brian Dable as his offensive coordinator is going to affect the Buffalo Bills offense? No, you I'm not saying that. I'm walk. saying when it happens, call me. But at this particular moment, yeah. don't sit up there and say he did now. Well, we shouldn't even call be having this conversation. Happen. We shouldn't even be having this conversation until the season starts then. And, but why not? Why? Because we're going on what we just saw last why season. Think, why would you think Ken Dorsey would come in and change everything but and this man not, just hey, went to the hey, AFC? Hey, swag goop. It's not about changing everything. It's about calling things at the right time. You know, if if your defensive coordinator is calling something, they might have the same scheme. But if he's dialing up a blitz on on third and third and twenty nine, that might be the wrong call. Opposed, but to key, I just watched do it. I just I just watched the Kansas City Chiefs not score a point in the second half against the Bengals. Okay, with I the same offensive this coordinator and head coach. Defense, though. Yeah, but I. Because Key had he, Josh Allen six. He was six in QBR. He was six in completion. So that number six, I mean, it does match up with the Keyshawn numbers. Tripping. I know y'all don't care about I'm the not numbers. Tripping. Y'all tripping, man. <laughs> it is you what it tripping, is. Man. Are you right. glad I didn't put Derek Carr in there? Oh, yeah, you better not have put Derek Carr in there. You hey, would have ran, hey, hey, ran, hey, ran, ran home. You would have ran home with those mountains. That's what you would have done. This radio time out. Time out. It should be a different deal this year with Derek Carr because he's got himself some serious offensive. Yeah, that's true. But he ain't better than Josh Allen. Okay, let's go. Uh, The Blitz rolls on tomorrow. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.